here's a legal pro tip. If your videotapes have been subpoenaed by the Department of Justice, don't immediately engage in a criminal conspiracy to destroy those tapes. It's not the crime, it's the cover-up. Except here, it's definitely the crime. But also, it's definitely the cover-up as well. Yes, as the world was waiting for Donald Trump to be indicted in Washington, D.C. in Fulton County, Georgia, a Special Prosecutor Jack Smith had a surprise up his sleeve. Namely, three additional criminal charges against Trump in the case alleging mishandling of classified documents in Florida. A grand jury has now indicted Trump and two of his employees for pressuring a Mar-a-Lago employee to delete security footage that had been subpoenaed by the government. The superseding indictment explains how the two Trump employees is Walty Nauda and newly charged Carlos de Oliveira attempted to delete security footage because, quote, the boss wanted a server deleted. The new indictment also charges Trump with willful retention of national defense information for the time up in New Jersey when he showed a classified document to random civilians. Yeah. See, as president, I could have deleted yeah. uh, No, I can't, you know, but this is yeah, classified. Now, now we have a problem. Isn't that interesting? So let's dig into the new indictment. The superseding indictment is a formal criminal complaint brought by a grand jury to replace the original indictment. This usually happens when there is new evidence that warrants an additional charge. And there's no such thing as an amended indictment. To add charges, prosecutors must go through the same process as the original indictment, which means a grand jury must weigh the new evidence. And once the grand jury returns the superseding indictment, it replaces the original indictment. And that's what happened here. The superseding indictment adds more facts to the original allegations, starting with the description of Mr. De Oliveira, and then uh, going into a new section entitled the attempt to delete security camera footage. And as always, these are unproven allegations from the DOJ. They have not been proven in court, but also, again, given the volume of verbatim quotes, it definitely seems like the DOJ is acting like they have the goods. And according to the new indictment, on June 3rd, when FBI agents were at Mar-a-Lago to collect boxes, they observed surveillance cameras near the storage room. On June 22nd, the government emailed a draft subpoena to Trump's lawyer. The subpoena sought footage from the ground floor where the boxes were being stored. The next day, after being tipped off about the request from the government, on June 23rd, Trump called De Oliveira and they spoke for 24 minutes. On June 24th, the Department of Justice sent a final subpoena to Trump attorney number one, which sought, quote, any and all surveillance records, videos, images, photographs, and or CCTV from internal cameras. At 1.25 p.m., the lawyer called Trump about the government subpoena. And then what are they, about surveillance cameras? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with, like, if, are those yours? Yeah. Why, can't you why can't you clear them? I don't understand that. The phone call from the lawyer to Trump establishes that Trump was on notice that he could not destroy or delete any material that was responsive to the subpoena. At 3.34 p.m., an unnamed Trump employee, referred to as Trump employee number three, texted Nauda and told him that Trump wanted to speak with him. Although Nauda was scheduled to travel with Trump to Illinois the next day, Nauda changed his schedule and traveled to Mar-a-Lago instead. And the indictment says that Nauda, quote, provided inconsistent explanations to his coworkers for his sudden travel to Florida. And of course, used the shushing emoji, which might as well be the official mascot of criminal conspiracies. Now, on the night of June 24th, De Oliveira and Nauda texted uh, an unnamed Trump employee who was director of information technology at Mar-a-Lago. And as you can see from this exchange, the three bros chat about their plans for the weekend, requesting that the IT director, Yusil Tavares, help them out on Saturday. And from the indictment, it reads, at 5.02 p.m., Nauda sent text messages to Trump employee four asking, hey bro, you around this weekend? At 5.05 p.m., Nauda texted De Oliveira asking, hey brother, you working today? De Oliveira responded, yes, I just left. Nauda then called De Oliveira and they spoke for approximately two minutes. At 5.09 p.m., Trump employee number four texted a response to Nauda, quote, I am local, entertaining some family that came to visit, what's up? Nauda responded to Trump employee number four, okay, cool, no biggie, just wanted to see if you were around, enjoy, bro. At 6.56 p.m., De Oliveira texted Trump employee four, hey, buddy, how are you? Walter called me early, said it was trying to get in touch with you. I guess he's coming down tomorrow. I guess needs you for something. Trump employee four responded, he reached out, but he didn't say what he wanted. I told him I was local, but entertaining some family that came from NYC this weekend. He told me to, no worries. At 6.58 p.m., Trump employee four texted Nauda, bro, if you need me, I can get away for a few. Just let me know. Nauda responds, sounds good, thank you. On Saturday, June 25th, De Oliveira told a valet at Mar-a-Lago that Nauda was flying from Bedminster to Florida, but he needed the trip to be secret. 
And despite the very cutesy nature of this project, uh, De Oliveira couldn't help but tell the valet that Nauda had tapped De Oliveira to do an important job talk with the IT director about how long security footage was stored. And shortly after Nat arrived on June 25th, he and De Oliveira went to Mar-a-Lago. They entered the security booth where the security videos are shown on monitors. The two defendants took flashlights into the tunnel where the storage room was located, pointing out the security cameras, the cameras which presumably recorded their little excursion pointing out the cameras, which was probably really handy for the prosecutors when they presented this evidence to the grand jury. Now, on Monday, June 27th, 2022, Dale Oliveira summoned the IT director to a basement tunnel and then walked with him to an audio closet near the Gold and White Ballroom, which we've talked about and made fun of at length here. Now, Dale Oliveira told the employee that, quote, the conversation should remain between the two of them, uh, and that obviously clearly worked here, but he asked the employee how long the servers retained the surveillance footage. When the IT director said 45 days, De Oliveira told him to delete the video. Quote, De Oliveira told the employee the boss wanted the server deleted. The IT director, quote, responded that he would not know how to do that and that he, quote, did not believe he would have the rights to do that. The IT director said he would need to hear from one of Trump's business security guys from the Trump organization to fulfill that request. De Oliveira repeated that, quote, the boss wanted the server deleted. De Oliveira then said, what are we going to do? Now, this is pretty obvious, but given that the IT director, Tavares, is not named in the indictment and is the only other witness besides De Oliveira to some of these conversations, it probably means that he's cooperating with the DOJ and is providing testimony. Uh, and a bit of advice, if someone ever tells you to delete files at work, regardless of whether there is an actual known federal investigation at your workplace, your answer should be, can you please put that request in writing? No one will ever know. No one will ever know. You sent me to shred the records of off-book hush money and illegal intimidation. So after this exchange with the IT director, De Oliveira did know what to do. He called up Walt Nauda. And after a text and a chat, Nauda texted De Oliveira on my way to you. De Oliveira traipsed through the bushes to meet up clandestinely, uh, he thought, with Nauda at an adjacent property. De Oliveira then hiked back through the bushes at Mar-a-Lago and went to the IT office before returning to the other property to meet Nauda again through the bushes. And then later that day, Trump called De Oliveira and they had a three minute phone conversation. Uh, in July of 2022, the government got some of the footage uh, that was in response to the subpoena. And on August 8th, the search warrant was served. And then the indictment goes on to explain what might be witness tampering. Uh, paragraph 91, just over two weeks after the FBI discovered classified documents in the storage room in Trump's office, on August 26, 2022, now to call Trump employee five and said words to the effect of, someone just wants to make sure Carlos is good. In response, Trump employee five told Nauda that De Oliveira was loyal and that De Oliveira would not do anything to affect his relationship with Trump. I expect loyalty. That same day, at Nauda's request, Trump employee five confirmed in a signal group chat with Nauda and the PAC representative that De Oliveira was loyal. That same day, Trump called De Oliveira and told De Oliveira that Trump would get De Oliveira an attorney. Now, presumably, employee five testified independently about this. That PAC representative appears to be Susie Wiles, who has had multiple meetings with the DOJ. And I imagine a criminal conspiracy perpetrated via a group signal chat probably violates the independence that PACs are supposed to have with political candidates. And I kind of wonder where those super PAC funds have been going and for what purpose. I don't know, it looks bad. And then there's also the pool flood incident that happened when the investigation was mostly stalled because of Judge Cannon. It appears that De Oliveira was the one who drained the pool at Mar-a-Lago which subsequently flooded the room where the surveillance logs were stored last October. And that would suggest that the flooding was potentially an intentional part of Trump's cover-up. Now, uh, we can't be sure, but Legal Eagle has acquired exclusive video footage of those employees attempting to bypass the server's security measures to erase inculpatory evidence. Now, as you can probably already tell, Trump and his valets are going to need a good lawyer. Now, if you need a great lawyer, my firm, the Eagle Team, can help. If you've been in a car crash, suffered a data breach, or have social security disability issues, we can represent you or help find you the right attorney. Just click on the link in the description for a free consultation with my team, because you don't just need a legal team, you need the Eagle Team. And the link is down below. Now, as for Trump's role in the new charges, he was indicted on three more counts. The superseding indictment adds a new count 32, charging Trump with one additional count of unlawful retention of national defense information. Uh, there's been a lot of speculation about whether Trump would be charged for the unlawful retention of NDI for the document he apparently showed people at Bedminster. Uh, to review, the original indictment contained a transcript of a conversation Trump had with his staff and two authors who were working on a book for Mark Meadows. 
In that conversation, Trump seems to show a document, describe it as classified, and say that he could have declassified it, but it was still a secret. And Jack Smith's team added an additional sentence to the superseding indictment to indicate that he has now been indicted for willful retention of that document. And it appears that the DOJ now has a document in question, which allegedly lays out a plan to invade a foreign country. Uh, Trump took flack for allegedly being interested in invading a foreign country to deflect from his own domestic issues while he was president, but Trump blamed General Milley for that particular plan, which is why in the audio clip, he says that the top secret document, which he apparently has in his hand, uh, totally wins his case uh, because it was prepared by Milley. This totally wins my case, you know. And I guess you really need to pick your battles here. But in any event, if you haven't heard the real audio of that conversation, uh, check out the short that I did on it where you can hear what was left out of the indictment's transcript. In the leaked audio, Trump basically admitted that he did not declassify the document. And because these actions took place in Bedminster, New Jersey, it's possible that there might be another indictment there. Uh, but it's still unclear to me why the DOJ never issued a subpoena or search warrant for Bedminster, at least not one that's public. Now, uh, Trump, De Oliveira, and Nauda were charged with conspiracy to obstruct justice in violation of 18 U.S.C. 1512K. The three men are alleged to have conspired to withhold a record, document, or other object from an official proceeding in violation of 1512. And not surprisingly, the three defendants are accused of attempting to violate 1512C, which forbids uh, corruptly altering, destroying, mutilating, or concealing a record with the intent to impair the object's integrity or availability for use in an official proceeding. And they're also charged with trying to keep the security footage from being provided to a federal grand jury. And it's certainly worth paying attention to section 1512, because if and when Trump is indicted uh, for uh, crimes connected to January 6th, it's extremely possible that he might be charged with a 1512 violation in those proceedings as well. Uh, now, additionally, De Oliveira is charged with making false statements to federal authorities in violation of 18 U.S.C. 1001. The indictment says that during a voluntary interview with the FBI in January of 2022, De Oliveira made representations that were materially false, fictitious, or fraudulent when De Oliveira lied about being involved in any group that helped move boxes. De Oliveira told the FBI that he had neither seen nor heard anything about boxes being moved or stored at Mar-a-Lago. And the original indictment said that Nauda worked with a Mar-a-Lago employee to move approximately 30 boxes from Trump's residence to the storage room on June 2nd, 2022. And the superseding indictment identifies De Oliveira as that employee. And the new indictment also says that De Oliveira helped Nauda load boxes and other items uh, onto an airplane that flew Trump north for the summer. Now, it's probably fair to say that if De Oliveira had cooperated with the government, he might not be facing these charges today. But hey, he's loyal to Trump, and we all know that Trump rewards those who are loyal to him. Right? Now, Trump's additional charges have been covered extensively by more than 231 news sources. 33% of the reporting comes from the left, and 16% is coming from the right. And if you compare the headlines, you start to see something interesting in the framing. On the left, you have uh, outlets teasing the real goal of the charges. And on the right, you have uh, others highlighting Trump's statements about the special counsel being deranged. And you can draw from those examples your own conclusions. And this is all possible thanks to today's sponsor, Ground News, a website and app developed by a former NASA engineer on a mission to give readers an easy, data-driven, objective way to read the news. Every story comes with a quick visual breakdown of the political bias, factuality, and ownership of the sources reporting, all backed by ratings from three independent news monitoring organizations. And I especially like the blind spot feed, which highlights stories that are disproportionately covered by one side of the political spectrum. Because it's important to know what's circulating online in echo chambers instead of being in the dark about misleading media narratives on both sides. And maybe we can even challenge some of our own assumptions. And with the Ground News Vantage Plan, you get all of their features plus access to the My News Bias feature, which is basically a dashboard for your news diet. You can see how your reading habits change, what are your top sources, and whether you're seeing diverse perspectives. And if you use my link, you'll get 30% off of the Ground News Vantage subscription. Just click on the link that's on screen right now or down in the description. You'll get a fascinating and more objective look at the news and help support independent and transparent reporting. So to get 30% off, just click on the link below. And after that, click on this link over here for more Legal Eagle, or I'll see you in court.